So in today's video, we will be talking about integrators. And this is an upgrade of my previous video about ideal op amps and all my other op amp videos. So if you haven't understand what ideal op amps are, then I highly recommend you checking those videos out before proceeding in this one. So uh, let's get back on track. So the purpose is what are integrators? What is integrators? Well, integrators uh, in electrical circuits are op amps. And uh, these op amps, what they're supposed to do is to produce the output that is essentially the integral of whatever your input is. And to do that, we basically have the same formation of what an ideal op amp is, but now uh, we change things up a bit in terms of what kind of elements we put in terms of uh, the input and on our feed negative feedback part of the circuit. So the only thing that we change is that we change, we replace the resistance that we used to have as an ideal op amp into a capacitor. And what that capacitor is going to do is that when that current goes into the capacitor, first uh, I'm going to label uh, what our integrators are first. So here we have the uh, input voltage, our input resistor, then we have our capacitor here, our, and then finally we have our output voltage here. So essentially what we do is that we uh, have the current that starts from the input voltage and then it goes through the input resistance, travels into uh, the negative terminal, and then it goes here, passes through this capacitor, and then it touches through uh, the output voltage. Now when it goes through the capacitor, what it does is that it charges, and that's essentially where the uh, integral uh, magic happens. And I also want to label here that this is zero voltage and this is zero voltage, indicating that it's an ideal op amp. So here are the equations for a uh, integrator. So this VC is basically, I'm going to go back here. It's essentially the uh, voltage across the capacitor. So we have that as uh, the lowercase c. We have a capital VC here, and that's essentially the capacitance voltage at time zero or initial. And after time zero, uh, you know, current's going to go through the capacitor, and that current's going to build up, and that current's going to build up, uh, causing the uh, the integral to happen. And that is why we have uh, one over C, and multiply by the integral from zero to T, and then we have the our we have our current waveform, and that is V C. Now the next thing we have is our output voltage waveform. And our out of output voltage waveform consists of uh, the inverting component of it, and that's why we have that negative. It's an inverting integrator because uh, our negative feedback is connected to the negative sign of the op amp. So basically, we have uh, our output voltage we have our integral time constant, 1 over CR. And finally, we have our integral of our input voltage. That's what it is. Finally, we have our uh, voltage across the capacitance. We subtract that. And that would basically be what our output voltage uh, over time is going to be. And finally, our gain of our uh, op amp is basically going to be the inverting sign of it again. So we have that negative sign, divide, and then we have our integral time constant with also uh, um, the term S as part of uh, Laplace. So those are one of the three main equations of differentiate uh, of a, an integrator. And now finally, let's move on to signals of what kind of you know waveforms or signals are going to be produced in an uh, integrator. So initially, 
we have our input voltage that is uh, producing a square wave. So just like this, T1, T2, T3, T4 for our input voltage. And then basically our output is going to be like this. So it's essentially the integral of that. And as we know that when we whenever we have like a uh, flat line, when you integrate that, we get a linear slope. And that is why we got we get a linear slope. Uh, in addition, as, as you can see, when, it, when the time is from 0 to T1, 0 to T1, our output goes down because from 0, it's at this uh, positive magnitude, positive voltage. And then once it gets to T1, it goes to negative. So it has to have this downward slope. Now, this slope will continue on forever and ever and ever. But the only thing that is stopping it is that, as we know, it's a square wave, but also the fact that our power supply. So if our input voltage is like really high, higher than what our the voltage supply could handle, which is essentially this part of the op amp, right? This part. If this is higher, then our output voltage could only reach the point at which how much uh, the op amp could supply it to. So that's a little heads up about uh, our output voltage waveform. Moving on, so finally we're going to touch upon the frequency response of the integrator. So for the integrator, it's good when we are trying to eliminate our gain of our uh, integrator when the frequency increases and increases from then on. And when and to completely eliminate any gain greater than one, uh, we basically modify what our time, our integral time constant is. So if we modify the values of our capacitance and our resistance, then that frequency that it uh, meets will basically um, decrease our gain, which is here, to the point where there, where it's only one. So that is the frequency response of our integrator. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in the near future. Thank you for checking out this video. There may be another video that you might also want to see that is the pole reversal of what we just did.